morning. All right, good morning. It's the second session. Um, I am Jennifer Bruski, um, and I'm going to talk about my transition from being a WordPress developer to being a Drupal developer. And um, so, as you can see, I have some Among Us theming going on here. Um, so far, nobody's kicked me out, so I think I'm doing good. Um, but yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, I've been in development probably eight or nine years, so not, it hasn't been like my entire career. I used to teach high school math, so I used to hang out with teenagers all day talking about calculus. That was their favorite thing, honestly. So, um, you know, I've been an administrative assistant, which in that position they were like, hey, make our website. And I was like, oh, okay. And that's when, you know, WordPress fell into my lap. So um, I would say I'm probably a non-traditional developer. I don't have that computer science degree. I do have a math degree, so I was lucky enough to take fun things like Fortran in college. And th I never want to see Fortran again. It's very cool. <laughs> I'm not good at it. So, um, and I took a lot of MATLAB, which is programming specifically in math, and then R. So I have, like, some like Python background. So it, was, it wasn't like a completely new subject for WordPress. Um, PHP was new at the time, for me. Not in the world, for me. So, uh, and then I moved jobs, and then I was a Drupal developer. So it was really the decision made for me. Um, so uh, I've been doing Drupal for probably three and a half years, and I still feel very new. So, um, just talking about that transition today. So, uh, things I'm going to talk about is making the leap. Um, the like grass is always greener. Um, the learning curves um, of how to switch between the two. Um, I do hear a lot of comparisons between the two, but I don't think they're uh, one to one. Um, you know, some people might say that. I don't think they are. Um, and then talking about DevOps and other fun buzzwords I've learned. Um, in the last three years. And then just the open source community, the Drupal community versus the WordPress community. How is it different? How is it the same? And then um, hopefully we can just talk a little bit about it. And if you know nothing about WordPress, this is WordPress's uh, fun wapu. Uh, it's their thing. I call him the Drupal Drop, but I don't know. That's probably not his official name. Uh, but yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, making the leap. Um, I have plenty of gifts in this presentation, so I apologize. Um, and the, like I said, the decision was sort of made for me. Um, I've worked, so WordPress was all agency work. So a lot of websites in and out the door really quickly. Um, not a chance to go back and fix the things that you wish you could have fixed. You know, there's, there isn't a lot of like refinement and being like, ooh, I want to fix that. It's just in and out, in and out, in and out. And, um, I did get to work on a single Drupal project. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool. And then uh, I moved to another WordPress agency. Same thing, a lot of WordPress. And one Drupal project. I was like, this is kind of intriguing. So then I kind of went and looked and threw my hat into the ring for jobs that I didn't necessarily check all the boxes for. So like, you know, you look on Indeed and they have these required and, you know, recommended. And, I just threw my hat in a lot of rings until I got a phone call. So um, I think being on, you know, being in my 40s, being in the workplace all this time, really what you want is maybe not somebody with 10 years of Drupal experience, but somebody who can solve problems. Somebody who can look at the problem ahead of them, know where to go get help, know who they can talk to, know how to Google stuff, you know, know how to ask for help. So I think that that was my saving grace in the interview. I was like, you know, I don't know Drupal, but I would love to know Drupal. You know, so um, luckily they took me on and I had a lot of great mentors. So I think uh, I was lucky enough in my life to have a WordPress to Drupal translator who knew both programs. So they could be things like, hey, this theme file is just like your functions PHP file. And I was like, oh, all right, got it. And then, you know, you stick everything in the theme file, which shouldn't do that. But, you know, you, you, it's a learning curve, right? So you start making those mistakes and things. But, but making a one-to-one, -one, like, this is like this in this other program. And it was really helpful for me. So um, to this day, uh, I just started a new job about three months ago. But prior to that, we 
we're doing both WordPress and Drupal projects. And really, it was a matter of which one should we use. Because you could use either. There's an argument that you could use either, depending on the kind of site. So we have a lot of sites that I used to call brochure sites. They're like four or five pages. They're just like, hey, this is me, and this is my business, and I'm like, you know, a small business owner, and I don't have time to learn Drupal. So sometimes we would give them WordPress just for ease of, it's quick, it's easy to use, here you go. But then we have clients that want, you know, and here's a buzzword early. They want a web app. They want some way to handle all their inventory and all their invoicing, and I'm not gonna build that in WordPress. Um, I know people do, and I'm very proud of them, but I would rather use Drupal. So, um, so like a lot of times we just look, you know, what's the purpose of the thing you're building? I don't want to say website, because you can build so many awesome things in Drupal that never hit the public web. Um, what are your goals? And then, like, where does all your prior experience, like, if this thing needs to be built in six weeks, maybe you're not learning Drupal and building it in six weeks. Like, maybe you need to fall back on the things that you're good at, so. Um, learning curves, I think you mentioned Googling in the last, yeah. Gosh, you gotta be a good Googler. And when I say that, you need to learn magic ways to Google things. Like you can, two people can be looking at the same thing, but the phrase they use is gonna give them very different answers. I think I'm an expert at Googling exact watchdog errors. Gotten really good at that, um, to figure out what's going on, so. Um, my biggest uh, issue when I moved was like, where is everything? Because in WordPress, it's really easy to find stuff. And in the Drupal UI, I'm like, I don't know where anything is. I have no idea. Like, so it was a lot of like somebody showing me how to get to taxonomies. How do I get to the content types? You know, how do I get to, like some things were built as a content type, some things had blocks, some things had hard coded and templates. And I'm like, what is going on? So uh, the things that um, helped me was somebody taught me how to twig debug. Huge game changer. Like I can see what templates getting used right now. That's amazing. And then also learning like how to use double and kint and all that stuff. And that's just nerd developer stuff. But it, it helped me see what was going on under the hood. Like why is it not doing what I'm politely asking it to do? So. I talked ahead, I apologize. But I'm um, like, just learning double and can't, like that was, I was just var dumping everything in WordPress. Like console logging, var dumping, just horrible, horrible troubleshooting, debugging skills. <laughs> but I'd like to think I've gotten better. But like, this is a huge game changer for me because if I'm trying to get a template to work right or something, I need to see how, how where are the hooks I can grab onto, where are the values coming from, like stuff like that. So. Uh, more experienced Drupal devs sat me down and went, we're going to teach you how to debug. And I was like, thank you. So then that prevented a lot of questions. You know, he, he uh, got me away from him for a little bit so he could do his stuff, right? He taught me how to look up stuff. So if you are newer to Drupal, learn how to ask those questions. Like I, I remember a lot, my favorite phrase to say to him was, I know you told me. I know you told me. But can you tell me again? How do I do this thing? So then that proceeded to help our team realize what documentation we needed somewhere. Because, you know, obviously if I had to ask six times, it's probably something that doesn't get stuck in my memory very good. So it was nice to have some wikis. We did some wikis, um, another buzzword. But, you know, and it got him some free time back, right? So it's, it's just nice. So if you are the mentor, remember... You used to be there too. Not everyone came out of the womb knowing Drupal. So um, just knowing how to be a good helper and then knowing how to ask for help constructively, I guess. All right, I would be remiss to not include this meme about learning curves. If you've never seen this before, I see it all the time, but it's the learning curve for popular CMSs. Um, ModX, WordPress, and Joomla are down there. And then Drupal is a cliff with a bulldozer and you know some gallows and I used to joke that my old mentor yes. was the bulldozer. He just knew a lot. He's been in Drupal since like Drupal 5 or 6, right? He's got a lot of knowledge. And um, I, I was the one falling off the cliff. That's me. So as a mentor, like how can you help people make this leap? I think understanding that not all of us have this super solid computer science foundation. 
I, I know computer science. I just don't have this fancy degree. Like, I know how machines think in general. I don't necessarily, if I had to go sit through a leap code problem, you'd probably find me crying, right? But I can still solve problems in code, even though I can't, you know, do those kinds of fancy problems <laughs> in hack sessions. Uh, and then, so just remember, I think I said this already, remember you used to be there. Not everyone comes out knowing everything. And then as mentees, the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is don't suffer in silence. Don't sit there with your imposter syndrome next to you saying, I should know how to do this, and I'm gonna sit here for eight hours and just question all my life choices. You need to ask. And so it's really hard to be vulnerable in a, in a team chat especially, right? Especially as a new employee, like, how do I do this thing? But it helps because there are other new people that are coming in behind you. There might be people that were new three months ago and oh yeah, hey, I found it here. So somebody who had been there for 10 years maybe doesn't remember where that documentation is. But somebody who is newer is like, oh yeah, I had to look that up and I found it here. So just don't suffer in silence. I have a half an hour rule for myself. I give myself 30 minutes to start Googling start knocking down documentation doors. If I'm still talking to a brick wall, I will ask. And, and it's not like, how do you do this thing? It's like, hey, what can I look up? Do you know if there's documentation? What, like, is there a tutorial on Drupal eyes on me? Is there something I can go look at? You know, just point me in the right direction. That's my favorite thing to say. Can you just point me? And I'll, I'll go run it. So. All right, DevOps and other fun buzzwords that I have learned since joining the Drupal community. Um, I think that WordPress is awesome. I'm not here to like slam it, I think it's great. I think it's got a huge community and some people don't necessarily follow best coding practices. There's a lot more third party plugins involved. There's a lot of bad advice out there. There's just, I feel like the, when I go look something up in the Drupal forums or I look something up on a module issue queue, I'm probably getting pretty good advice. Maybe that's a horrible assumption I should make, but I do make that. When I go look and Google how to do something in WordPress, cool. You know, you might be getting some good advice and you might not. So, you know, don't do it on your live site. Try it somewhere else. So, uh, the, the beautiful thing about Drupal is all of this, like, you know, hot, the config export and the config import and things that you can work into your pipelines and stuff that you do not have to worry about when you're first learning Drupal, I promise. But what's really good is this, the thing that I needed to learn at first was like, some things are config changes, some things are database changes, and learning how to see the difference, right? So in WordPress, the wonderful practice of like, well, we're gonna make all the changes on the staging site and add all the content, and then I'm gonna export that DB, and then I'm gonna go put that one in my local. So like being able to just export those config files and push them to it through a DevOps pipeline has been like a game changer. Did I know how to have to set that up? Nope, somebody smarter than me did that, right? But understanding the process of it. So a lot of new people to Drupal, like I mentor some people that are even newer than me, right? I like being middle of the pack. I like having smarter people around and I like helping. So I'll say, you know, oh, that's a config change. And then they know they have to, you know, export it, get it in the config files. Or that's a database change, right? Like the title on the homepage is different. Well, yeah, because you got to go enter it yourself. That's a database change. So um, if you Google what is DevOps, um, you're going to get as many answers as results as you see. And then you can also see which websites are stealing content from other websites. It's really great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like the Acquia version of DevOps, you know, Drupal Groups has a definition of DevOps. Uh, some of these are from like AWS. Some of them are from Pantheon. So I think they're here today. Shout out. Uh, so just, I would say the most important thing about DevOps is learning your current team's DevOps. How do they do it? Like, because once you get an understanding of how it's done, maybe then you can make, you know, like, it'd be really cool if we could do it this way, you know, or having those conversations about, you know, DevOps stuff. But I felt like it was drinking from the fire hose when I moved from WordPress to Drupal. Um, so it was so much all at once. And so the thing I tried to focus on was just like, what's a database change, what's a config change? So as a newbie in the space, that was my biggest contribution to my team, so I didn't walk all over everything somebody just did in a previous commit. So, 
IT crowd. Hi. Um, and then the community. So I was part of the WordPress community. Like I went to WordCamps, traveled all around, met a bunch of people um, for about six years. And then now I'm just starting to venture out into the Drupal community. Hi. <laughs> this is my first Drupal camp. Um, so it's been really great. I Both are very welcoming. Like I never felt like I was not welcome, which is awesome. So just keep in mind that somebody who's coming to a Drupal camp or a meetup or, or something like that, that could be their first time. And, you know, chances are maybe they're not a Drupal expert. And just remember that. They're gonna, I say some bonehead things about Drupal all the time. All the time. So, uh, but then somebody nice is like, oh yeah, but probably you should think of it this way. And I'm like, oh, thank you. So, um, going to some scary places online sometimes, I spend a lot of time on Stack Overflow. I would be terrified to post a question on Stack Overflow because they're brutal, <laughs> brutal. So um, if you are kind enough to contribute to things like Stack Overflow, you do see some really nice threads that like warm your heart a little bit because somebody takes the time to explain something. Like, hey, it sounds like you're trying to do this. You can use this hook, and then you can do this thing, and then you should do this, and hey, here's a code pen. And you're like, I love you. How do I buy you a cup of coffee? You know, so just know that there's, Again, you used to be there. You used to not know how to do that stuff. So try to be kind. If you're coming on to Stack Overflow to just say, hey, you know, it's over here. The answer's over here. You know, eh, maybe you should just like rethink your post and be like, I just need another cup of coffee. You know, um, so just being kind to people would be nice. Reddit, I've realized the Drupal Reddit subreddit is pretty good, can be pretty brutal, just like any other subreddit. Um, but I found some information in there. I'd say the majority of like watchdog logs I find just by Googling and things like that, but Stack Overflow is a huge change, or a huge game changer. Reddit, I get a lot of help from the module issue queues. Even learning how to find the module issue queues was trippy. Like I could go find modules all day, but I was like, how do I, where are the issues? You know, oh, it's got over here, and you gotta click on open, and then there's all these versions, and. Just having somebody walk me through that. How do I find if somebody else is probably having the same issue I am? Especially jumping from D9, 4 to 10. Lots of them, reading lots of issue queues. Um, sometimes it's dependent on where you're hosted. So I've worked with AWS boxes and things like that, but I've also have dealt with Drupal on Pantheon, which is different. It, their entire, like, it's just, it's just different. It's not that different, it's just different. Like um, learning how to migrate stuff to Pantheon or away from Pantheon, and really the only reason it's different is because they stick some things in some different thought folders, right? It's just structured a little different. Um, but Drupalize.me was mentioned in the last talk in this room. It's huge, it's a game changer. Please beg whoever you can to get you a subscription or just cough it up if you need it. Um, it's amazing, like if you wanna know how to make a view with this custom, you know, with this custom taxonomy type or something, they just have a whole tutorial. Walk you through it, the whole thing. It's like I get it to like Code Academy, but just for Drupal. I love it. So uh, the other thing too is I've recently gotten into some of the. I think it's called Aquia Academy, maybe, maybe. It's their learning for like when you try to take the Drupal certs. Um, so our company likes us to get certs. Certs are like. So we all have to go take our Acquia Drupal certification exams. And so that's a little scary. Drupalize.me, fun fact, has some tutorials on how to pass those exams. Um, and then Slack. And when I say Slack, I mean like join the Drupal community here. Join, join their Slack. Join, I'm in Pantheon Slack. Join, there's WordPress Slack, some part of it. It's just, there's a huge community out there. So you gotta go knock on some doors and get yourself in there. And I appreciate all of the smarter people than me that are in those places that help me get better. Appreciate you, so. Um, and again, I kind of already mentioned this, but kindness is free. Like, there's, there's a lot of negativity on Stack Overflow and even, even sometimes in some module issue queues, so I, because here's another person for the hundredth time asking the same dumb question. I get it, I have children, I understand. Okay, <laughs> but if you aren't in a space where you could maybe at least answer neutrally, maybe just don't answer, right? Because it's, it's a huge turnoff to be like excited about a brand new tech and I'm gonna learn this and I just really need to know how do I do this and then just get 
you know, you're, you don't know what you're doing. And you're like, yeah, I know. That's why I'm here asking. You know, so I, I, the majority of it is positive, but I've just seen some super negative, <laughs> some negative stuff. So just be kind. Um, and I like this quote from the office because he, he only gives his organs to his real friends. <laughs> so. Um, all right. So now it's just about discussion. Um, there's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Um, sometimes I think it was hilarious. I got so excited about the path auto module, like inappropriately excited about the path auto module. And I ran to my mentor and I was like, look at this. And he's like, Oh, you're adorable. Yeah. Go ahead and install that. So, um, you know, just being able to have discussions with people at different levels of Drupal, sometimes if you've been in it for 10 years and you have somebody new come ask you something or have a discussion about it, it makes you see things in a different light. You're like, I never thought about doing it that way. That might be, that might work. It might burn, but you know, it might work. So it, it's always great to, to talk to people that are at different skill levels than you. It's just, it's a win-win, win-win all around. So I love questions. If you don't have any questions, I have some, I, uh, you know, never have I ever questions. So. <laughs> you let me know if you, do you have any comments, questions, experience? Have you made a leap? Have you, like, only come out of a boot camp and now you're some, you know, BAMF Drupal developer? Like, anybody? Anybody? Okay, we're going to play it. Oh, yeah. Question. Yeah. I, I wonder uh, if there are any, like, when you are doing work in Drupal now, if there are any like WordPress things that you like miss and wish yes. for Drupal things? Gutenberg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, fun story. I hated Gutenberg when it came out in WordPress. <laughs> I was like, what are they doing? They're ruining it. This is awful. And then I liked Gutenberg. And now I think that in Drupal, somebody phrased it to me this way. WordPress is a uh, content management system. And Drupal is a content framework system like you can do like Drupal's the the potential of Drupal is just so much more than WordPress and I'll, I'll fight anybody about that now um, I probably wouldn't have said that back when I was a WordPress developer right I can do anything in WordPress no you can't um, so I think just knowing that when you install Drupal with the base theme and you know the base modules like the world is your oyster right there's no how do I upload an image yeah, you're gonna have to like install some stuff to do that and configure some stuff. Whereas like WordPress, you install it and you're like, bam, I got a home page. Look at that thing. You know, so um, I think that I miss having that out of the box. That doesn't mean I can't get there. And so like now our team, my old team, I say our team, my old team, we figured out a way to get a good starter Drupal like kit, I guess we called it, where it had all of our modules we used on every website, you know, had our templates for every, you know, so we had a good place to kick off. But getting to that point was, was a good learning experience for me. Um, so yeah, I miss having that. I've played with Layout Builder and doing like the drag and drop blocks that way. I know there's, you know, discussions and movement and trying to get Gutenberg like things in Drupal. So that really excites me. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I rambled a bunch, but nope. yeah, I miss that. It's just more like, here you go, out of the box. Doesn't mean it's better, just means it's a little more baked when it comes out, so. <laughs> I, I do a lot of cooking stuff. I'll say, ooh, that's a good idea. I need to let it marinate in my head for a minute. I'll come back to you, so. Did you I guess, yeah, well, I was just gonna make a comment, I think more on the mentor, mentee stuff. And I think, it, yeah, you have to kind of both you, I think what you said was great about like you have to ask questions, but also like the mentors and other people just have to understand like no question is really a bad question, and they they're asking a question not just because they don't want to do work, but they want to you know find out you know they want to learn something new, and yeah, yeah, and just I think yeah that's one thing I always think about is like you know even if it seems to me like that's a silly question or not a great question, it's like it, there's a reason they're asking it and. It's good to try to help it answer that. So. Yeah, and you know, in education, there's all these buzzword, buzzwords about like learning styles. That's not my learning style, you know. And I come from a teaching background, so not everyone learns the same. So I feel like having 
team documentation, videos. Maybe it's not a video because some people don't learn well from videos. Maybe it's written or links to articles and things like that. Um, and you will learn what you need to put in the docs from the new people asking you questions. So it's sometimes like I've, I've tried to help people in the past that you're like, this is literally the eighth time you've asked me the same exact question and I have sent you the documentation. So instead of trying to get frustrated, you know, you take a deep breath, go get a cup of coffee, and you're like, how can I help them find this in the future? Because I might not be here. My boss calls it the bus protocol. You might not be here tomorrow because maybe a bus is going to cream you on the way to work. So you better have written down what you did. <laughs> so you're not leaving your team in, in a pickle, right? Everyone would be sad and they wouldn't know what you were doing in your code. So uh, the, the idea of the bus protocol, right? So I try to help people learn how to Google. Like, how do you go find this somewhere? Because some people aren't very good Googlers. Um, there's a really funny website called Let Me Google That For You, and you can send people links from that, and it literally has a video to show you how to Google things, and it is just like, probably save it for your friends, but it's an excellent site. So. Um, any other comments, questions? I'll just throw one more. Yeah. I, do, it, I just, your, your, some of your comments reminded me that like one time, I remember being like, I feel like I've had this problem before. And then I Googled it and I actually found an issue queue where I asked the question on Drupal.org <laughs> and then I solved it four months later and now it's been four years and I still had the question again. And I was glad, I, I definitely was glad I answered my question <laughs> four years ago because then I can find it again later. So Future you trouble. will appreciate past you, you know? Right, yeah, so that's another reason to document things too, is just for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's another thing that I cracked me up. Somebody had said it once and now I just ran with it. It's like future Jen's gonna appreciate me writing this down right now. Now. You know, and then, or you Google something and you see the first 10 things are already purple, and you're like, yeah. darn it. <laughs> <laughs> that was me trying to get ESLint to work in VS Code with the Drupal ESLint. Anyway, I got it figured out, but uh, it was many days of Googling, so. Yeah. Do you have any um, suggestions or, I don't know, maybe help, helpful language or um, good ways to, to explain to clients? why they might want to choose a Drupal system over a WordPress system. When WordPress sure. is so like well known and a lot of people have worked in it before, they they sometimes like resist making mm -hmm. that switch to the more complicated system even though their requirements really would do better in the more complicated system. Yeah. Um, sure. I've had those conversations. I think there are PMs and people that have the conversation better than me, but I can give you my developer mm -hmm. yeah, uh, version of it. And so a lot of times I will talk to them about, you know, it, it's hard because there's a lot of big co enterprise companies that you would worse press for stuff like that, but Drupal is so much better at relationships and data and data handling and stuff like that, where if in WordPress I want to do something akin to a view, I'm writing the SQL query and now I'm the weakest link because if I don't write that correctly, or if I don't keep in mind, what about this, what about that? And it's so much longer. <laughs> I'm just gonna go make a view, add my relationship, and just move on with my life. So a lot of times we will just talk about how much more efficient Drupal is at handling data. WordPress is really good at making, the joke is that, that brochure site, right? Like what is your menu and your hours on Sunday? Go for it. WordPress is perfect for you. If you want to keep track of all your customers' private data and private file systems that you don't, you know, now we're talking about Drupal because you can set that up, right? Where it's it's just safer over there. It feels safer over there. And so um, there's a lot of technical reasons for that that I can't speak to. I just know that if I want data heavy stuff that's going to do a lot of uh, day-to-day -day business, like your business requires you to have this thing up and running from eight to five, I'm probably gonna argue for Drupal. So, like we just, I, I think I can talk about it. Nobody tell anybody. Um, but we built a, I don't know, what, whatever more buzzwords you want, an ERP, a CRM, whatever, for a concrete company. And so they pour, did you know that manhold covers can also be concrete? I didn't, um, but they can. 
so like things like that or like sewer the concrete sewer things and just so much concrete and so they wanted to be able to handle customer relationships in there print invoicing keep track of inventory have a workflow through that to prevent people from doing things in the wrong order <laughs> um, and, and being able to upload CSVs of current inventory items just like oh. so one thing was having a project that encompasses all that stuff so it's just tied in with the relationship right and then they also wanted to be able to upload PDFs to that and then when they hit this magic print button they want this project page to print and then all of those attachments to print with it in one PDF and I did it. <laughs> it took two months <laughs> and it took learning PostScript so that was terrifying too. Holy kudos to PostScript developers. Um, but it was using Entity Print which probably people are familiar with with Drupal and you know to take a node and make a PDF of it and then I had to use obviously Drupal doesn't printing the attachments is a little harder. So I use something called GoScript, which is a JavaScript situation and PostScript. Lots of Googling, lots of posting questions. <sighs> but to build that thing in WordPress, I, I think I would have probably said, you know what, I'm just going to go work at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, just having, because the, they were a little hesitant too. Not so hesitant, because they were coming from SharePoint. Oh. So it was a pretty easy, you know, like, hey, you don't have to put this thing in six different places. You can just put it in one place, and it'll just show up in six different places. So um, it was it was an easier conversation with them. But um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. I went off on a tangent. But, yeah. yeah. I'm brand new at everything, and I'm looking for a mentor. Does anybody want to be my mentor? Heck yeah. Are you in the Slack channel for this? Yep. Oh, okay. So we're. And MinDot, we're just moving to a CMS for the first time ever. Nice. We have no CMS right now, and it's just cool. chaos. <laughs> so we're super looking forward to having one, and for, for that one to be Drupal instead of the terrible things that our enterprise wants to make us do. <laughs> so uh, no we, think we need. I mean, we need to learn. Like, I don't know. Like, we don't even know what we don't even know yet. Yeah. So it's so uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to go to the Drupalize Me for the basic foundations, um, but I also am not a dev, so I'm just a content guy, but I need to know how to talk to the devs. Yeah, for um, sure. So uh, are there any, like, languages I should, like, what are the language things that I need to know to talk to the devs? Um, like, what are the words i got to ask them? I would honestly say... It depends on the dev, and I hate that answer. But I would just have, like, sit down and be like, I need to talk to you, and I'm going to say a lot of non-dev words for you, and I need you to just take them in for a minute, right? Because that sometimes people have to tell me that. Turn off your dev brain for a second, because I need to tell you what I want this thing to do. Because devs, we're trying to solve the problem the minute you open your mouth, and you're like, I want it to do this, and then we're like, oh, we can do this, and then, and no, just listen to me, okay? <laughs> Let me get, like, I need to be able to put a news release in one place and then I want it to show up in these 12 things yep. you, so like just it really depends on who your devs are so I would just buy them a coffee or so whatever their favorite drink is we're and hiring a dev too so if anybody's looking to be a dev for state government hey are you going to go to that talk tomorrow about the Minnesota Department of Health yeah Yeah. I wanted to go to that one I don't have enough PTO tell me how it goes so how do I hire them no. <laughs> yeah. so what's interesting is I can't talk like super big details, but right now my new job is is working, contracting for the government. So learning how agencies, private people use Drupal, just woohoo, Drupal, and then you get to a, like, a government version of it, and I'm like, wow, it's really structured, and this is amazing, you know, but it, it was already built. I didn't have to build this. Yeah. I'm just helping. But yeah, I think that... I think we'll be able to copy a lot of stuff from yeah. other state agencies. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to lean heavily on them to guess seated at least yep i would uh, yeah go i would go to that talk and be like please yeah, i know be my friend <laughs> health and there's also like dnr people here that i'll uh -huh. have to connect with so. yeah for sure um the department of health talk is today it's is today it? sorry i thought today i swore on you okay maybe i'll yeah. go yeah. so yeah i know that the biggest thing that's helped my career growth and my learning curves and all of that is just like getting out of my little introvert comfort zone and going to things like this and talking to people and being vulnerable 
because that's really hard to, to sit here and be like, I don't know how to do this thing. Because some people, that's that's the hardest sentence that ever comes out of their mouth. But just being able to do that. Because like, Whoever seriously. Whoever doesn't run away, I'll talk Yes! Because <laughs> Drupal's hard. I don't care who you are. Drupal's hard. In a good way. In a good way. Like, learning, uh, I shouldn't say this, but when I was in WordPress, I learned lazy PHP. Because WordPress just fixes a bunch of your PHP mistakes for you. Like, I didn't even know there was ampersands in PHP before I got to Drupal, and I was like, oh. Okay, and so then once I started to get into Drupal, I like hardcore took a bunch of like boot camp stuff about object oriented programming because that's that's what it is, right? And I need to know how to do that. Where WordPress, I could just be like, oh, the snippet will work, and you know. And so being a non traditional like PHP, and I love talking to boot camp students because like, oh my god, I learned React. I'm like, good luck. Like <laughs> most of the internet is PHP, you know. So like, um, yeah, go to meetups like get connections so, like I still the last job I left they still reach out occasionally like hey I don't remember how to do this thing and then I'm like I wrote it down here and they're like thank you and they run away <laughs> so just you know it's hard because I would rather just be in my dark office in my pajama pants writing code right but you got to get out and make connections which you are so that's amazing so. Mm -hmm. thank you yeah do you want to quick do the never have I ever is there anyone else in here developed in WordPress? Never developed in WordPress. Never? I mean, to find yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good question too. Yeah, because um, like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a really big distinction in Drupal of like, I'm a site builder, I'm a developer. There isn't that in WordPress. Uh -huh. So, like, I copied something into my functions file, so I'm totally a developer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Post it anywhere on Drupal.org. Yeah. I mean, you can raise your hand if you have. Maybe I should have. Raise your hand if you have posted on Drupal.org. How about we do that? Because I have. And I was terrified. My coworker made me do a patch. And I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. So um, don't go look it up, okay? Because it's probably really bad. But I have. I did two patches uh, and some issue cues from. And it was just uh, from going from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10. And it wasn't even a big thing, and somebody totally helped me write it. But that was terrifying because I feel it's that imposter syndrome, right? We all got it. So, anyway, um, created a custom module in Drupal. Yeah. When I first did that, I swear I was like, yes, it works. <laughs> oh, it was a game changer. Because then you don't have to put everything in your theme file, and life is beautifully organized in your code. I'll post it on Stack Overflow. I have not. I, you have? Did it go well or were people mean? It went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is to Google the problem I'm having, find it on Stack Overflow, and it's like four years old. And then the guy just comes back and is like, I figured it out. I'm like, how did you do it? And they don't post the answer. That's my favorite. Um, has anyone been to a word camp? Or am I? Yeah, look at that. There's, I'm not the only one. Um, they're not, not much different than this, just WordPress instead of Drupal. Um, who loves front-end work? I don't. <laughs> who loves back-end work? Yes. Me. If I had to choose, I'd probably pick back-end work over front-end work, but I I like front-end work, but like, oh, I, I, the previous agency I was at, our clients were um, design companies. So we were, the we they would just... They would sell the project, be like, it's going to look like this, and then they would contract us to build it. And so when you'd go through client QA, they'd be like, um, that's like two pixels too much to the left. And so I learned really quick to be like, I just, I can't. It's not a magazine. It is a website. But um, so I really do love backend work. Um, I love getting data to show up where I wanted to. Nice my fire All right, so anyway. But thank you. Um, if you have any other comments or questions, we still have time. But uh, that's just my personal journey. Sweet. It's not that exciting.